In this video, we introduce the concept of vector representation and basis set. We discuss what constitute a linearly independent basis set, and how linear combinations of these basis vectors allow us to span the vector space. We also introduce the orthonormal basis set, and extend these ideas of Euclidean vectors to the complex vector space. Let's start with the Euclidean vectors, or geometric vectors, which are objects defined by a magnitude, or length, and a direction. For example, here we have the vector which denotes the position of Alice relative to Bob, which we denoted as the b -ket. Here, b -ket belongs to a two-dimensional real vector space. In order to convey to Alice her location relative to Bob, Bob would first have to tell Alice his coordinate system, or similarly his basis vectors. In this example, his basis vector b1 would be a unit vector pointing towards east, while b2 points towards north. Then, the vector b would be 6 times of b1, plus 8 times of b2, as shown in the yellow box. Hence, the coordinates of Alice location relative to Bob would be the two-dimensional column vector with elements 6 and 8. We can also write it in its more familiar equivalent vector notation form as shown in the green box. However, Bob could have chosen a different basis set b1 and b2. In the representation on the left, the basis vectors b1 and b2 are now being rotated anticlockwise by about 16.2 degrees relative to the previous basis vectors. In this new representation, the vector b ket is column elements 8 and 6 instead. Bob could also rotate the coordinate system such that the basis vector b1 is now collinear, or parallel with b ket. In this case, the b ket vector has column elements 10 and 0. These examples illustrate that there are infinite representations for the same vector. Thus the numeration of the vector is meaningful only if one define what are the basis vectors, or the representation used. So, does this mean we can arbitrarily choose any two vectors b1 and b2 to be our basis vectors to represent b ket? The quick answer is no. To be qualified basis vectors, these basis vectors must span the R2 vector space. In other words, we can obtain any vectors b ket by linear combinations of the basis b1 and b2 as shown in the yellow box. However, if b1 and b2 are collinear, or parallel, as shown in the graph on the right, then no linear combination of b1 and b2 can generate the vector b ket as shown. In this example, the vectors b1 and b2 are said to be linearly dependent, since one can get b2 from b1 just by a simple scaling or multiplying by a constant. Hence, these are not basis vectors as they will not be able to span the R2 vector space. In fact, they only span vectors which are collinear with itself. Following this argument, we can then surmise that as long as b1 and b2 are not collinear, then they will be able to span the R2 vector space and can be valid basis vectors. Here, we introduce the concept of linear independence as defined in the green box. It states that b1 and b2 are linearly independent when c1 multiply by b1 ket plus c2 multiply by b2 ket equal to 0. If and only if c1 and c2 equal 0. We can see that if b1 and b2 are non-collinear, then linear independence must hold. The basis set that we have used in the representations as illustrated in the left graph is what we called orthonormal basis set. An orthonormal basis set must be linearly independent, have unit length, and spans the vector space. It is straightforward to see that our basis vectors b1 and b2 have a length of 1. Since its dot product with itself, or what we call its norm, is 1. We call them unit vectors. The basis vectors b1 and b2 are also orthogonal, since the dot product between them is 0. Thus, they must also be linearly independent as we have shown in previous slide. They will thus span the vector space V. By extension, a set of n mutually orthogonal vectors would allow us to span the vector space V of dimensionality n. However, one can also construct the vector B ket using non-orthonormal basis set. For the example on the left, 
B1 and B2 are orthogonal. And B2 is as a unit vector. But B1 is not. Hence, this is not an orthonormal basis set. Nevertheless, it spans the R2 vector space. And the vector B ket in this representation would be the column vector with elements 3 and 8 as shown. Next, in the example on the right, B1 and B2 are not orthogonal. In addition to the fact that B2 is also not a unit vector. Similarly, these vectors span the R2 vector space and allow us to represent the vector B ket as a column vector with elements 3 and 5. In many applications in science and physics, the orthonormal basis set is more widely used for reasons we will discuss in future videos. In summary, given a real vector space V of dimension Rn, then the basis set consists of n basis vectors B1, B2 to Bn. The basis set spans the vector space Rn, such that any vector B ket can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors as shown where cj is a set of real numbers. In order to form a basis set, we need to find n vectors that are linearly independent. Linear independence is satisfied if the only way the linear combination of all these basis vectors to be the null vector is for the real number cj to all be zero. Lastly, the orthonormal basis set is a special type of basis set where the dot product of the bi and bj kets equals to the Kronecker delta function. In other words, the dot product is 1, when, i, equals to j, or otherwise it is 0. We can also extend these concepts to the complex vector space V of dimension Cn. Then the basis set consists of n basis vectors B1, B2 to Bn. The basis set spans the complex vector space Cn, such that any vector B ket can be written as a linear combination of the basis vectors as shown, where Cj is a set of complex numbers. In order to form a basis set, we need to find n vectors that are linearly independent. Linear independence is satisfied if the only way the linear combination of all these basis vectors to be the null vector is for the complex number Cj to all be zero. Lastly, the orthonormal basis set is a special type of basis set where the inner product of the bi and bj kets equals to the Kronecker delta function. In other words, the inner product is 1 when i equals to j, or otherwise it is 0. We shall define what is inner product in the next video. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes. Join our Free Science Academy Discord channel to discuss science and technology. High school students are welcome to join and post your questions, we will answer them during our free time.